a song that we like to sing in my church, and it simply says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I win. I'm a winner. He loses. Satan loses. He lost. It's over. Yeah, y'all gonna help us sing it? It's real easy. Y'all ready? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Traditionally, we do it in the month of March. However, because of the holy events that took place leading up to Easter in our Lenten season, we decided to postpone our Women's Month for the month of April. And if there's any idea, any inclination of how good this month is going to be, you should have been at the Women's Tea on yesterday. Oh. 
More than 100 women gathered and had high tea and had a good time fellowshipping and had a great message from State Representative Deborah Baysmore. But it's if any indication of how the women are going to have the rest of this month go, brothers, we're in some serious trouble. <laughs> the women have set the bar high already. And on this first Sunday, as I've always done, I've always allowed the ladies to take charge during the entire month. So the pastor is going to sit down. And our assistant pastor is going to be in charge of the worship along with Reverend Dr. Regina. And the women of the church are going to be in charge of the worship services every Sunday of this month. Amen? Amen. Somebody said, why you do that, Pastor? Because I remember as a 17-year-old young man, if my pastor had not given me the opportunity to be a part of the worship experience, I would have not been able to acknowledge and to accept my call to ministry. Many of us, in fact, all of us have spiritual gifts. And this is an opportunity for the women of the church this month to use their spiritual gifts to glorify God. You're now in the hands of our sister, Pastor Reverend Arthurine Bishop, ye ye here as she comes with the word for today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. screen the monitor's not working today so I hope you memorize that call to worship <laughs> amen I was glad when they said to me let us go to the house of the Lord our feet have been standing within your gates O Jerusalem for the sake of the house of the Lord our God I will seek your good those that have planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. 
Oh, Lord, I love the habitation of yes. your house and the place where your glory dwells. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth yes. and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O oh, sing it to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all your singing praises. We're going to continue to sing his praises with old school hymns, Standing on the Promises. Oh, yeah. And the choir's going to really lead us in. <laughs> Follow their lead. their lead. Let us sing. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternity ages, let his praises ring. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Huh? 424.
makes a promise, you can take it to the bank. Yeah. Now, man might be another situation. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sister Bibbins, who had a birthday this week, come and pray us in. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. With every eye closed and head bowed, God, we just come to say thank you, God. Oh, yeah. God, thank you that we can stand on your promise, God. Yes, God, thank you that your word is bond, and whatever you say, God, it is so, God. God, we thank you for healing, God. God, we thank you for just making ways out of no ways, yeah. God. God, and before we move on, God, we're asking that you forgive us of all of our sins that we've committed, God. By thought, word, or deed, God, yeah. knowing and unknowing, God, please forgive us, God. God, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth, God. God, we ask that you enter into this, your house, God. God, move from heart to heart and mind and mind. God, I pray that whatever is bothering us, God, we leave it at the door, God, and that we focus on you, God, and worshiping you in spirit, God, and in truth, God. God, we thank you that we're able to worship you, God. God, we thank you that beyond our sins, you still make ways for us, God. God, we thank you that we're not living in the Old Testament, God. God, where we can call on you and you'll answer, God. God, we thank you for this time, a time such as this, God. Lord, trouble is on every side, but we know that if we lean and depend on your promises, God, all will be well, God. And God, we ask that you bless each house that's represented here today, God. Those who are tuned in, God, who couldn't make it, but those who took time out to make it into your house, God, touch them. You know their every need, God. You know what our desires are, God. And Lord, we know that we can just put them down at the altar, God, and you'll make a way if it is so in your will, God. And God, we thank you for that, God. Thank you for healing Sister Anna, God. Thank you for touching every need that we have here at Flat Rock, God. And God, we thank you for a leader that we have, God, who looks over his flock and makes sure, even with the simple happy birthday, God, we thank you. Keep him and his family in your hands, God. Allow him to grow stronger and closer in you so that you can lead him and direct us in the, in the way that you would have us to go, God. God, we thank you for the women of this church, God. Thank you, God. We thank you that we're able to speak your truth, God. We thank you that we don't have to hide behind a man, God, that you'll allow us to speak up and speak out, God. God, we thank you. And when it's all said and done, God, and when we leave from this place, God, allow us to meet you and allow you to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, God. And whatever it is, God, we turn it over to you. Bless the speaker today, God. Allow the speaker to bring forth your word and step aside, God. All of these blessings we ask in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Oh, it could have been me. Outdoors with no food and no clothes, all left alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic end. But you didn't see fit to let none of these things. And every day by your power, you keep on, you keep on keeping me. I want to say, yeah. But 
through the reading of the Old Testament and New Testament. Old Testament, Sister Fabi Bowen, and New Testament, Sister Sapor Dorsey. Woo, thank you. Good morning, family. Good morning. I'm thanking God right now for my Flat Rock family. Because yeah. God is so good. Uh, this morning's reading comes from Psalm 133, a song of a sense of David. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. This is the word of God for the people of God. Salutations and blessings, Flat Rock. How are y'all? I will be reading the New Testament this morning, which will come from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the NIV. And it reads, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness. Make, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. Word of God to the people of God. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Come on,
Sometimes we fall short, but we're now ready, getting ready for our offering. And we ask that you prepare that which you want God has put on your heart to give to the work of the kingdom at this church. And we are working. <laughs> going to march around. We're going to follow the direction of the ushers.
preaching time. It's time for the word. God's word. Yes, like honey in my mouth. Amen. And this morning, as we kick off our Women's Month celebration officially, we're going to have our assistant pastor come and let the Lord use her as the Lord is going to use her. But we got to get behind the preacher now. So let's, let's, that whole thing of call and response, right, Sister Joy? And so we're going to get behind the preacher. And so Reverend, Reverend Bishop uh, is, is, is really a servant of God. Despite what she goes through in her personal life, she shows up. And I thank God for her witness today of what God can do in the midst of it all. So preach, sister. Preach. God got you. And after we hear from this choir, the next voice you will hear will be our servant, sister, Reverend Altering Bishop. Thank you. 
freedom from the old school, y'all. One of my favorite songs. Because I know I've come this far by faith. And I couldn't have done it by myself. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the Lord on my side, where would we be? Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Woo. Mm. Holy Spirit, thank you for being in this place. Good morning, Flat Rock, and all of our folks who are anywhere. Thank you, God, for this is an awesome day that you have made. So we will rejoice. We will shout and praise because we are in the presence of the Lord. This month, we are celebrating women with fervor and excitement. Hello. But as I look in the audience this morning, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, God has blessed us. I don't know if the men don't outnumber us this morning, ladies. It's our month, but there you all are. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, God. I mean, there are men everywhere. Woo, hallelujah. That's what God's church is all about. That's right, not, uh, not sitting here with all women in the church. Even when it's Women's Month, you all have come out because you want to serve the Lord. And we 
thank you for that, men. You'll hear why you should help us out in a minute. <laughs> this morning, as we are celebrating Women's Month, we want to thank God, honor God, first and foremost, for being in this house this morning. Thank you, God, for our pastor who is allowing us to serve and our ministerial staff who is here this morning, all of you, but especially our women, Reverend Millicent and Reverend Dr. Rogina, not discounting any and all male ministers in the house, but any other female minister that we are not aware of who's in the house this morning, we say good morning and we honor you as well. And I pray for all of you both here that the Lord continues to bless you in a mighty special way. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Our theme for Women's Month is an encouraging proclamation for women to be an unstoppable force of strength and accomplishment in this world as we walk strong and courageous in the will of God. So I've been led to start this month with just a little chat of encouragement for us ladies. By saying, women, walk in your dominion authority as you're walking strong and courageous in the will of God. You don't hear that word much, dominion authority. And we're going to use one of our scriptures today, Isaiah 41, 10 and 13. And um, I'm going to begin with it and I'm going to end with it. Because I, God gave me this in January as my scripture for the year. And I was so blessed and highly favored to see that the women decided to use this scripture as a theme scripture. Isaiah 41, starting at verse 10. God was talking to the Israelites saying that he was going to help them no matter what. So, of course, if he helped them, he's going to help us. Do not fear. I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Yes, all who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. That's the word, y'all. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. That's the word, y'all. You shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find. For those who war against you shall be as nothing at all. Hang this on your refrigerator, ladies. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, do not fear. I will help you. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I come before you right now thanking and praising your holy name, God. Thanking you for this opportunity to serve and speak to your people, God. But enter the temple and ha say what you would have them to know, God. Help, Holy Spirit, go from heart to heart so that all will be touched by your word, encouraged by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I am excited for this thing about our thing because if we tell the truth to ourselves, we should be doing just that. Ladies say, I have dominion authority. Dominion authority. And I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, all right. Somehow, often women seem to be shy or ashamed in some way of just being how strong, gifted, talented, intelligent, smart, and anointed we are. I could keep on, but the uh, pastor won't let me have more time. 
we could be here forever. For we are, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We have only to go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And you know if I'm going to give you encouragement and preach about God and women, I always have to start with Genesis 2, 18 to 22. <laughs> so normally I, I, I just not a person who have points, but today I have three points and I'm going to move on. So my first point is God, my creator, has given me dominion authority, so God is first. Always. Always. Okay. When God created man and gave him authority over all that he had created, animals, waters, everything, God decided that man should not be alone all to do and handle all of this creation. No, he didn't. No, he couldn't. He needed a helpmate. And the new King James Version says, comparable to him. Man, y'all learned something. Yeah. Comparable to him. Someone to love and share in all of this and help him out. He shouldn't and couldn't do it by himself. Mm. So just as God gave man the gift of life and dominion authority, Genesis 2, 18 to 22, God said, let me put man to sleep. And give him a gift of life, and God created woman just the way God wanted her to be. Pouring all of his specialties of life into her. The way God wanted her to be. Without your help, men. Amen. All right. This is where we have receive our dominion authority, ladies. God gave it to us when he created us. He gave us our dominion authority. So it is the will of God that we have dominion authority. Ain't nobody can say, well, I let you have it. No, God gave it to you. He put it in each of us as we were created. I looked up dominion and here are some synonyms, ladies and guys. Sovereign, supremacy, control, power, leadership, direction, mastery, dominance, superiority, and authority. We receive all of this from God, so this is why God is first always in our lives, and then all things are added unto us. All right. Um, if y'all want all these words, I'll send them to you. We are created to be strong and walk courage courageous in the will of God, not in the will of man, in the will of God. God has loved man, man and woman equally in his heart, so he endowed them equally with his dominion authority to go everywhere and do everything. We have never been less to God. We may have different roles, but we are equally important. Different roles, but we are equally important. Any man that does not love you like God loves you was not sent by God. So often women walk with feelings of unworthiness. That is the trick of Satan and any other evil thoughts he can implant to cripple our minds. You can take that one too, men. Okay, y'all can take that one too. So we don't think we can be all that God has planned for us because Satan has tried to cripple our minds. Satan is a mind stopper. Having dominion authorities over ourselves mean that we have to love ourselves as much as our loving creator loves us. 
So our point number two, two shake off the mind stoppers. Shake off the mind stoppers. Shake off the mind stoppers. God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that he could die for us and save the world so that whosoever believes in him by faith can repent and have their sins forgiven. John 3, 16 and 17. So just because we have sinned and come short of the glory of God, everybody has. Everybody. Everybody has done that. But God sent Jesus the Christ so that our sins can be forgiven. We must believe in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. We are the temple of God. And the Spirit of God dwells in us. Read it for yourself over and over again. The Spirit of God dwells in us. And it says, if any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. That's the word. It's not my word. That's the word. Him will God destroy. You are this temple. You and God walk together along your life's journey. You belong to God first, not man. You be belong to God always, not man. We can relinquish. We cannot relinquish our dominion authority. The only thing we must do as we create dreams and goals in our lives is believe in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And in Psalm 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear no matter what. Kick the mind stoppers aside. Fear is a mind stopper. Guilt and shame are mind stoppers. Many criticize, some in your own family, are mind stoppers. Envious persons are mind stoppers. Persons who disrespect you and take you for granted and only want you to meet their needs, dreams, and goals, putting your own on the back burner. That's mind stopping. You can be your own mind stop when you talk negatively to yourself doubting your own self-worth and your talents and your capabilities because of something somebody said or you saying to yourself that is mind stopping push it aside shake these mind stoppers off get rid of them read your word and put on the whole armor of God and learn who you are in God and walk strong and courageous in the will of God. Believe it. Do it. You've got to believe it. Because God always looks for your strength while you keep walking on day after day, no matter how things look, good or bad, God is walking with you. And he's there to help you stop being a mind stopper. And finally, don't just talk the talk, walk the walk. Don't just talk the talk, walk the walk. Jesus, our role model, walked everywhere. Strong and courageous. He was powerful and had dominion authority. He could have commanded chariots of horses and gold and be adorned with gold and silver. He could have done everything that looked like he was famous and had trappings. He needed none of that. So looking at what others have or have accomplished should not be the driving force to what we accomplish. Don't look at other people. What God has for you is for you. you. You don't have to worry about whether you're going to get what God has for you. 
God, what God has for you is for you. And he has plans since you came here to make sure you get it. Amen. 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 Hmm. So, what have you been hearing from God that tells you what his will is for your life? What have you been hearing? You, you don't think God talks to you? God talks to you. He, he tells you, uh, you better do this or you better do that. Holy Spirit says, no, you better not do that. that ain't, that's not in your lane. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Walk where I want you to go. And when you walk in my will, you will have favor. So you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He, she, who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So as a child of the Most High God, you are a joint heir with Christ, so you have this light. You have his power. You have his strength. It's inherent in your spirit. A man creates a business. Businesses. But then what? He hires female project managers to run it. <laughs> and keep it afloat. Why don't you have your own? Why don't you make your own? Why don't you create your own with all these attributes? Why don't you walk within the will of God and do what God would help you do? The question is, it's not who's going to let me. It's who's going to stop me. Who's going to stop me? If you believe in God Almighty, you say, and you say you walk by faith and not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, then you make your dreams a reality by putting God first and walk the walk, not in darkness, but in light. So you can walk safely on your way and your foot will not stumble. That's Proverbs 3 and 23. I heard you. That's Proverbs 3 and 23. So you, your foot, you will not stumble. God's going to help you do whatever it is you need to do. And God has the Holy Spirit to help you and maintain the power and dominion you will have to guide you because Jesus said, I am in my Father, my Father's in me, and we come to live in you. So if you're a temple of God with God living in you, there's nothing you can't do. Nothing anybody has to give you permission to do but God. And finally, the icing on the cake, the seal of God's approval, and the guarantee that his plan will be done is our scripture today. And I'll say it again. God says, don't be afraid. He is with you. Don't be distressed because I am your God. Why are you worried about other folks? I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. I will fight your battle against your enemies who come against you, and they shall be ashamed and disgraced. You don't have to worry about saying, uh, how am I going to work with them? Don't worry. Just say, God, take care of this. God, you got it. And stand back and watch God move. They shall perish. They shall be as nothing as if they were non-existent. That's the word, y'all. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying, Fear not, I will help you. My sisters and brothers, 
because of God's love for us. Hold on to God. You can't fail. Things may not always go your way. A delay is not a denial. And you want, but you are never a failure with God. Take that word out of your vocabulary. Stop giving it to your kids. Encourage them to walk with God. Don't worry about that things didn't always go the way they expected, but God's got you no matter what. And so from this day forward, my sisters, walk strong and courageous in your dominion authority because it is the will of God. God's peace and blessings be with you today. I hope this is encouragement as we start off the month so that we do everything we're supposed to do, not for today, not for this month, for the rest of our lives. I want you to walk with your heads up, ladies, not looking down at the flow, at the ground, out of somebody else's eyes, look them dead in the eyes and says, I'm a child of God, fearfully and wonderfully made, and I have dominion authority over everything that comes in this space. And if you feel that today you are not that confident, it may be because you have not surrendered your life to God. You have not said, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I want to be forgiven for my sins, and, and, I, and I want to, to, to walk eternally with God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so today I want to surrender my life. And I want to make sure that I'm a child of the Most High God for the rest of my days. I will never have to worry about it. I will never have to think about it. I will never have to doubt it. And if there's somebody who has not done that yet, please come give me your hand and give God your heart so that we can pray with you as you turn your life over to God and know that you don't have to worry about it no more. I know. Is there one this morning who, who, who would like to come and give your life to God? Doesn't matter how you you are. You can be eight, you can be eighty, but if you never say it, I want to give my life to God. It's for me. Hey! What God? It is for me, it's for me, what God, anybody else, is there somebody who, who might just want to rededicate their life this morning, you know it, it's been going in the wrong direction, and, 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 and God, you, I want to come this morning and say, help me turn myself around, Lord. Help me turn bring me around. I, I, I want to increase my relationship with you, God. It, I, I know where I've been and what I've been doing. And I just want to say, God, help me have a closer relationship with you. If you can come this morning and do that right now. It is. Because God says, there's no such thing as being unworthy with me. There's no such thing as you've sinned so much that you can't walk with me. I throw your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. If you just come and say, Lord, here I am. I know, I know. I know, I know what I have got. I know that I know that I know that if you give your life to God, you won't have to worry about it from here on out. Is there one? The second reason we open the doors of the church is because there may be someone who is looking and seeking a church home. Seeking a church home. It is. It is for me. And you said, I've been coming to Flat Rock and I would like this to be the place. For me. for me, this is 
the place for me. The doors are open from Flat Rock and me church. What God has for, for anyone me. who would like to join this morning. It's for me. It's for me. Finally, but most importantly, God hears every prayer all the time. So the altar is now open that for those Lord of you who would like to come and talk to God in your own way. If you've got something what that's God laying on your heart, leave it what God here. Has for and when you get up knowing God says, I got it, you don't me. worry about it because the battle is mine. Thank you, Lord. And if you're okay, you what may sit God down. But the altar is open for, for any and everybody. You are, don't have to be a member me. here to come to God's Me. altar. Amen. What God and if you would like special prayer, just hold your hand up me. and we will pray with you. It is for me. I know without a doubt that the Lord is gonna, gonna bring me out. What God has for me, it is for me, it is for me, it is for me. What God has.
me, let me, let me, let me, <laughs> let me. Let <laughs> me yet thy throne of mercy.
we're asking right now that uh, communion doesn't take long, but if you have to leave, leave now because we keep the doors closed while we're having communion, and we will move right along with that. But you all are welcome to be at God's table. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Dr. Regina if she will do the solicitation and lead us in the general confession. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, saying, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievous have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts and by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very re meet, right, and our bounden duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, for angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, who love and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 the Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, the most high. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat this flesh of, of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Our prayer of consecration, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, 
according to your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and he blessed it. we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. A prayer of thanksgiving. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passions. And here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable living sacrifice to you, humbly beseeching you that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, Yet we beseech you to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you. Almighty Father, without end, we say thank you. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Did you receive a powerful message this morning? Amen. A concise, bold, encouraging, and empowering message, especially for the women, but even for the men, as she gives us a sense to pause and realize that we don't have to be afraid. We have the courage because we have Christ in us. Amen. amen. Sister Le Delia Burton, would you please come? Sister Delia is our chairperson for <laughs> Women's Month. Hopefully she's going to come and share about what else is planned for the rest of the month so we can get all of the women and the men involved. Amen. Good morning, Flat Rock. Good morning. Um, I'm just humble and glad to be in front of everybody, but I will ask every courageous woman, will of God, to give yourself a hand. We don't have too much planned, but we're going to be coming to church every, every Sunday. And we ask that all the women bring somebody. 
Our theme is um, courageous women walking in the will of God. But the, 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 the one thing you need to remember, you should not be walking alone. You should be bringing somebody alongside you to walk with them, empower them. Our goal is going to be um, to build spiritual unity. By the time we finish, the church should be packed by the April the 28th. I'm encourage one of, I, I encourage one of you, all of you, to call somebody, talk to somebody, and just keep encouraging them. Everybody needs somebody. Come again. Thank you. Woman of so few words, but doing a powerful work as a new member. Like I said yesterday, that tea was phenomenal. Brothers, you did <laughs> For y'all who didn't come, let me tell you, I had all the women to myself. Amen. With a few brothers, Brother Liddell and Brother Abe and a few others was there. We thank God for them. Uh, Brother AJ did a phenomenal job. Amen. And our health as well as our culinary ministry helping him. But we had some of the young boys helping him serve. Let's give God a hand clap. And Brother Ricky was out there. Amen. Brother Ricky got involved. And so we're thankful to God. The women are starting off in a great way. Uh, we want you all to be reminded we'll be sending out a schedule. Uh, so you'll know on the 17th of April, we will have the pre-Women's Day Revival. Reverend Belma E. Grant, the pastor of Flipper Chapel, will be here for a 7 o'clock p.m. revival. Don't stay home on that Wednesday night. There's no Bible study. Come on into the house of the Lord and be with the women of Flat Rock as they get ready to celebrate Women's Day on the following Sunday, which is the 21st. Our own Reverend Dr. Regina Williams will be the proclaimer of the gospel for the 10 o'clock service. And then at 2 o'clock, we have a special service with the meal in between, and we will have Reverend Dr. Greta Fowler, the pastor of St. John AME Church in Fairburn will be bringing her church and her choir, and we ask that all of you, amen. And Sister Anna is calling for women, right, who are willing to be a part of the choir, who traditionally like to sit in the audience, but you can carry a tune far better than me. Amen. We'd like for you to come out, and there will be announcement about the women's rehearsals. Amen. This leads up to Women's Day, and then on the 28th, we conclude Women's Month. With, with the sneaker preacher in the house, amen. Reverend Cassandra Marshall will be back for our 10 o'clock service to preach from a young woman's perspective, amen. And we hope that you will help this Women's Month be a very successful, not so much in the financial area because we know you're going to give. We're asking everybody who can give to give $100 above beyond your tithes, but don't stay home if you don't have $100. This is an opportunity for the women to be united and standing courageously to show that they are powerful women of God. And I know the women of Flat Rock AME Church are going to do just that. Amen? Amen. God is good in all, all the time. God is good. Amen. It is the first Sunday of the month, and we have birthdays for the month of April. We've already started off. And Brother Eric English, if you're here, please stand. Eric English on the third. Sister Ebony Beatty on the 5th. Sister Michelle Walker on the 6th. Sister Sarah Stokes is today. Please, sister. If Brother Donovan Pink. Brother Donovan Pink is on the 7th also. Sister Delia Burton on the 11th. Sister Nicole Brown on the 12th. Sister Terion English on the 12th. Sister Leah Bowers on the 13th. Sister Fanny Brown on the 14th. Sister Quinasia Burton on the 14th. Sister Cynthia Holloway on the 14th. Sister Kim Beatty on the 16th. I haven't figured out, there are a lot of women in this church whose children are in the same month with them. Sister Beatty and Sister Bree are on the same month. Sister Lisa Ridley Jones on the 17th. Sister Joanne Goldston on the 17th. Sister Lottie, uh, br uh, Brother Ineola Balagoon on the 20th. Sister Lottie Wright on the 20th. Sister Ania Ty Taylor on the 20th. Brother Arden Tyler on the 24th. Sister Joy Parker on the 25th. Brother Patrick Wadley on the 26th. Sister Wilmer Geyer on the 26th. 
Sister Carmenita Smith on the 27th. Brother Terrence Stokes on the 28th, Sister Mary Thomas on the 29th, and Brother Dominique Thompson on the 29th. Are any of the members that we may have omitted, would you please stand? Oh, Lord, Brother Eric Bowen. What day, Brother Eric? The 7th of April. Praise the Lord. Yes, ma'am. April the 29th. Sister Carrietta, are you getting these? All right. Yes, my dear, when is your birthday? When is it? April the 25th. All right. 21st. Anyone else that we may have omitted? Any visitors? Bree? Easton is on the 25th. Boy, y'all, that's three generations in the same month. All right. Praise the Lord. Y'all getting that continuing. Anyone else? Any visitors? Any visitors whose birthday in the month of April? If there are none, this is the way we do it. Please, my sister, please stay. Tell us your name and when is your birthday. Amen, Sister Dixon. Praise the Lord. This is the way we do it here at Flat Rock AME Church. Praise the Lord. May God bless you with many more years of health, happiness, and longevity. Anniversaries, wedding anniversaries. Anybody got married in the month of April? Anyone got married in the month of April? Amen. Praise the Lord. Guess no, no spring weddings? All right. Guess too early in the spring, huh? All right. Praise the Lord. Just a couple of announcements that have been handed a note uh, to remind you about some of the other women's activities. One, we asking the ladies who have risen the bar a little higher this year. They're asking for $150. $150. Y'all are really trying to make the men look bad, ain't y'all? <laughs> Praise the Lord. $150. Again, don't let that stop you. Give whatever you can. We also want to announce that Edwin, Reverend Edwin J. will be preaching the youth service at Greater St. Peter on the 14th which is next Sunday at, at 2 o'clock p.m. For those of you who would like to go and support him, the YPD choir will be singing. So we're we, we going to show up and show out right down the road at Greater St. Peter. Amen. Well, did I miss something? Praise the Lord. Also, we want to acknowledge that there is a drawing for the flat screen that will be held on the 28th. So please get your tickets. I don't know about you. We might need to put a couple of them in there for the church since the flat screen was out here. <laughs> Amen. Also, you all should have received a note about uh, helping us purchase a golf cart. As you know, we are moving towards uh, designing our new church, and so we're not spending a whole lot of money on parking. Uh, so we, we are trying to do is to get a uh, golf cart so we can expressly our seniors and do an inclement matter. Uh, take people and transport them from the church house as uh, Jason parking to bring you down to the sanctuary. Please give whatever you can and mark it on your envelope for the golf cart, and we will hear you will help us purchase a golf cart. We want to say a special welcome back to Sister Anna, and she says thank you. <laughs> Sister Anna, this is a well written note, but I think no one can say it better than you. So why don't you say it the way you want to say it? Very few words, and I just want to say thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your genuine concern. Thank you to the missionary. Thank you to my music ministry. Thank you to my pastor. Thank you to my church family. I love you all. Thank you. 
Again, a reminder, women will be in charge of the worship experience every Sunday this month. If you are a woman who's on schedule, make sure you're on time. Amen, because we will get a substitute for you. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. We had a wonderful time with a wonderful message. Reverend Arthurine, come back and close us out. Amen with your remarks and give us the benediction and whatever. Oh, we have visitors. Oh, we got folks visiting with us today. Yes. Sister Goodman, you're not a visitor. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Anyone visiting with us for the first time, would you please stand? Anyone visiting with us for the first time, please stand. Don't be shy. Don't be scurry. We just want to love on you. That's all we want to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, the Lord knew, and I didn't know. Oh, you've been to you, this your first time here? <laughs> Y'all know my nemesis. Always got something to say. Reverend Bishop, come and close us out. Amen. For, for anyone who did not feel comfortable to stand, we just want, to know, want you to know that Flat Rock welcomes you. We love you as your sisters and brothers in Christ. And so because of that, even if you didn't stand, if your face is not familiar to us, don't feel out of place if somebody, the rest of the church comes up and hugs you and say, oh, we're so glad you, that you're here today. Amen. Let us stand for our doxology. Women, walk strong in your dominion authority. It is God's will. Put God first. Get rid of the mind stoppers. And don't just talk the talk. Walk the walk. Now, we ask the Lord God Almighty to bless and keep you and make his face shine upon you. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice, your grace, your mercy, your salvation. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your truth and your guidance. And may all of this in God rest, rule, and abide in you. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs>